Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss two abusive women. One is Naomi Campbell and the other is Black China. If you would like to support this channel, all I ask is that you hit up the like button and subscribe to this channel. I appreciate the support. So, supermodel Naomi Campbell has been banned from serving as a charity trustee for five years after an investigation from a watchdog group found evidence of alleged financial misconduct. The UK's Charity Commission released a statement reporting their findings about Fashion for Relief, an organization that Naomi Campbell founded. Fashion for Relief, which has been removed from the Register of Charities, was set up for the purpose of poverty relief and advancing health and education by making grants to charities or other organizations and by giving resources directly to those affected. The statement read, According to the report, between April 2016 and July of 2022, only a worthless 8.5% of the charity's overall expenditure was on charitable grants. The inquiry saw no evidence that trustees had reviewed the charity's operating model to ensure fundraising methods were in the charity's best interest and costs were reasonable relative to income generated. It also found some of the charity's fundraising expenditure was not reasonable. Naomi Campbell's charity held star-studded events to raise money, apparently for the cause of poverty relief, but tens of thousands of dollars were spent on luxury hotel rooms, spa treatments, and personal security for Naomi Campbell. Two of Naomi Campbell's fellow trustees were also banned. Regarding Naomi Campbell's charity, Tom Hopkins, the Charity Commission Deputy Director for Specialist Investigations and Standards said in a statement, trustees are legally required to make decisions that are in their charity's best interests and to comply with their legal duties and responsibilities. Our inquiry has found that tr the trustees of this charity failed to do so, which has resulted in our action to disqualify them. This is just a little scandal for Naomi Campbell, who famously faced assault charges in 2006 for throwing a phone at her maid. Naomi Campbell pleaded guilty. Naomi Campbell has a very long violent history with numerous convictions of assault. In a 2000 interview with Barbara Walters, Naomi Campbell said she never wanted to be known as a nice girl. I find that a little boring, she said. In a nice girl, she is not. Actually, she is a wicked woman. She was described as Corella DeVille. That lady is pure evil. Naomi Campbell has been accused of committing acts of violence 11 times and convicted of assault on four different occasions between 1998 and 2009. Naomi Campbell was accused of beating her assistant Georgina Galanis while in a fit of rage while they were in Toronto to shoot the film Prisoner of Love in 1998. Georgina said Naomi Campbell grabbed her by the throat and hit her over the head with a phone. Naomi Campbell had been frustrated after the pair had become delayed by customs at a Canadian airport. Georgina also sued Naomi Campbell in a civil suit in Manhattan where she lived. That case was settled and no details about the settlement were revealed. The Canadian judge discharged Naomi Campbell, which meant she wouldn't record a criminal record for the offense. He ruled Naomi Campbell had learned her lesson and demonstrated her remorse. But she did not learn her lesson. She probably was sleeping with the judge. Who knows? After all that, more abuse claims were coming. They kept coming. 
another personal assistant of Naomi Campbell's, Vanessa Frisbee, came forward in 2000, accusing her former boss, Naomi, of assault, saying she was attacked during an argument. There's more. In September 2004, another personal assistant, Simone Craig, sued Naomi Campbell for allegedly holding her hostage in a Los Angeles hotel and throwing a phone at her. There's more. In the same year, her housekeeper, Millicent Burton, also accused Naomi Campbell of punching and scratching her in their Park Avenue apartment. In 2005, it was reported that Naomi Campbell beat an assistant with a jewel-encrusted blackberry. And it don't stop. In 2006, Naomi Campbell is arraigned for throwing a blackberry at her housekeeper, Anna Scalavino's head. Scalavino needed four stitches, and Naomi Campbell is arraigned for second-degree assault. You hear this? In June of 2006, Gabby Gibson says Naomi Campbell argued with her, accusing her of stealing a pair of jeans, hit her, called her names, and threatened to have her arrested. In July of the same year, Amanda Brack, another former employee, sued Naomi Campbell for verbally and physically abusing her, imprisonment, and emotional distress, claiming the abuse occurred on three different continents. She claims Naomi Campbell even threw her passport into a pool while they were in Morocco. By 2007, Naomi Campbell was serving community service for her assault of Anna Scalavino and told to take anger management classes. Naomi Campbell had pleaded guilty to the assault of her former assistant, telling a judge in the Manhattan Criminal Court that she had thrown the cell phone, but it hit Miss Scalavino by accident. By accident, yeah, okay. Naomi Campbell turned up to complete her five days of community service in hot couture, including a Juliana Tessel fur coat and posed for press outside the Department of Sanitation. In a diary she wrote for W Magazine of the experience, she mused about her cute outfits and extravagant lunches she ordered in from trendy New York restaurants. You see, she didn't even take that seriously. Amidst her struggles with the law, Naomi Campbell has battled addiction, collapsing under the weight of her alcohol and cocaine addiction. You know, Naomi is a very toxic, wicked individual. She was connected to Jeffrey Epstein. Remember that? She was also identified in documents naming victims, friends, and associates of convicted pedo mm, Jeffrey Epstein and his accomplice, Ghislaine Maxwell. The documents linked several high-profile people to Epstein, who died by shoe size, you know, wink, wink, in jail in 2019 while awaiting trial on charges of SEX trafficking minors. Those named were originally kept anonymous and were not incriminated. A victim of Epstein's SEX trafficking ring, Virginia Louise Drewfrey, testified in 2016 that Maxwell sent her to have SEX with the owner of a large hotel chain and friends around the time of Naomi Campbell's birthday party. Photos had shown Gorefrey standing near Naomi Campbell on a yacht in the French Riviera in 2001. Naomi Campbell is demonic, okay? That is one demonic B. Naomi Campbell admitted in 2019 that she would occasionally socialize with Epstein, but that they weren't close. Uh huh. And his actions were indefensible. Yeah, right. <laughs> These people. She couldn't deny knowing him because there were pictures of her 
with him and the victims. So all she could say was, well, I did socialize with him occasionally, but I didn't really, I wasn't really close to him. B, how the heck you were not close to him, but you were on his island numerous times. She is a disgusting, despicable, she, uh, she's disgusting. Okay? Look who her friends are. She was friends with Jeffrey Epstein. And she's friends with Diddy. She's like best friends with Diddy. This nasty human, this, she is friends with Diddy. She slept with Diddy. She had orgies with Diddy. And I believe she was a madame. She recruited people, not just for Diddy, but for others. I believe that. She slept with Cassie one-on-one, -on -one, and she slept with Cassie with Diddy and others. I'm telling you, I can't wait for Naomi's day to come. This could be the very beginning. Because look, she's stealing money from her own charity. Misusing money. Her own charity. Oh, another thing too. When they... Listen, I'm going to tell you guys something. You may not know this. A lot of times, when they have these charities, or they do these um, charity works, it's all a front. Remember, it's all a front. Because when they do so much evil, they do so much evil, they like to do some, well, you know, some charity works. Well, you think it's charity works, right? For kids, helping the kids is a lie. Everything is always the kids. They love to be involved in kids' stuff. There's a reason why. They don't really care for kids. Are you kidding me? They don't care for kids. That's their way in. So they're not suspected. So you don't suspect what they're doing. They love to do so-called charity works. They love to, you know, raise money for this charity. It's a lie. It's a front. It's a front. It's a cover-up. Okay? These charities are a front, a cover. It's all lies. All smoke and mirrors. Do not believe anything that these people do. Because they are so evil, they think that all they have to do is do some sort of charity works to balance out their evil. Like the yen and the yang. Yeah, like the duality, like the black and white, like light, darkness, it just that nonsense. Yeah. So, but a lot of the charity works is a cover up. It's to have access to more victims. Okay, this whole, they are a philanthropist, this whole philanthropy works, like, it's all BS. Okay, you guys stop believing the lies. These people are not who they say they are. They're not. They have fake personas, fake discovery bios, like, oh, they were just walking down the street, and then this person came up to them, and then the rest is history. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It's all fake. Bunch of lies. So yeah, Naomi Campbell and her circle, they're all going to come crashing down. And it has started. So that's good news. And um, I remember years ago, she was at a party, some party event. And she and uh, Rihanna, they were so hugged up, like touchy-feely. Like, hugged up like they were hooking up. Like, they've done some stuff together behind the scenes already. That's how telling those pictures were. You couldn't tell me that those two did not used to hook up. Okay? Find the pictures. You'll see what I'm saying. Just wow. And, you see, don't think it's just the men who are gay in the industry. The women. A lot of them are lesbians. A lot of them are lesbians, but again, they'll deal with men. So 
it's it's crazy. It's really crazy. You know, so like you see Diddy. Diddy is obviously a gay man. Diddy is gay. This whole bisexual thing, I don't believe in that. Diddy prefers men. He deals with women for the look. But Diddy is gay. And you have these women who would deal with him. And and they don't mind topping him, you know, putting on the and making him their B. You know, like I'm trying to not <laughs> follow me, okay? So because in their world anything goes. You know? Like just yeah, these people are demonic, a bunch of deviants. And Naomi Campbell wasn't the only one who was friends with Jeffrey Epstein's. Of course not. You know, there are power players that were named in the documents. You know, including Bill Clinton, of course, Hillary Clinton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Without a... T- listen, Prince Andrew, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, he likes some young, young girls. Uh, Kate Blanchett. Cameron Diaz, another one who's connected with Diddy. Mm-hmm. She dealt with Diddy. Chris Tucker, Kevin Spacey. Oh, yeah, that guy is a creep. He is a sickle. George Lucas. So many. So many people on that list. They even mentioned Beyonce, Jay-Z, I think Kanye was on the list of, um, on the Jeffrey Epstein's list, flying to his island. Um, So many. A lot of people. A lot of your favorite celebrities. And they refuse to reveal the whole list. You know, they sealed it. But Donald Trump was talking about it last week. And he said if he become president, he will unseal that list. You'll see everyone's name. They don't want that. They don't want that. So, oh yeah, and also um, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis was in the document. Uh, yeah, he was, he used to hang out with Jeffrey Epstein. And another thing I don't see people talking about is Bruce Willis and Diddy used to hook up. They used to hook up. They had their own freak-offs. I'm surprised no one is talking about, I'm like the only one. I did a video on Diddy and Bruce Willis, you know, and I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do another one. So you heard it first. Bruce Willis, you heard it first here. (laughs) Bruce Willis could be on Diddy's freak-off tapes. I believe it. I really believe it because they used to have their own late-night parties, naked pool parties at 3 in the morning. Okay? So... Yeah, I'll do a video on that. Yeah, Bruce Willis and Diddy, they used to hook up. They used to get it on. Yeah, they used to, I believe they were lovers at one time. I believe it. When I do the video, you'll see. You'll be like, ah. Yeah, so should I do the Black China story on this video? (laughs) <laughs> oh, man, or should I? Because I don't want this to be too long. But let's see if I can do this real quick. So Black China is being sued by her ex-boyfriend. She unleashed a violent ambush on him while he was sleeping in their home, leaving his face a swollen and bloody mess. His name is Twin Hector. 
He claims Black China would often physically abuse him during their nearly three-year relationship when they were living together in Los Angeles. In the docs, twin Hector claims Black China's abuse reached its peak in September 2021 when she violently attacked him while he was sleeping in their bed. He claims she rained down blows on his face where her clothes fits, elbows, and knees, and he says she pinned his arms down where her body weight so he was unable to defend himself. Twin says the alleged attack left him with severe injuries, including gashes to his face and a swollen shut eye. He included a gruesome pick in the lawsuit. After the attack, he claims Black China called her personal physician to the home to treat him, and she still had his blood on her hands when the physician arrived. Twin claims Black China was often abusive during their relationship, claiming it would usually happen when she was drinking or using D-R-U-G-S. And he says she would often try to strangle him and use household objects as weapons, including wires, furniture, cell phones, and kitchen utensils. Rob is also referenced in the lawsuit. He says Rob and other Kardashians testified in court that Black China has a propensity for verbal abuse and extreme physical violence toward her domestic partners and others, primarily when she consumes alcohol. So Rob Kardashian did testify in April 2022 that Black China beat him at least five times during their relationship, alleging she strangled him with a phone cord while she was doing cocaine and drinking. Rob also testified she held a G-U-N to his head. Yeah, you heard right. She held a G-U-N to his head. Anyway, the docs... In the docs, Twin says Black China believes she can verbally abuse and physically attack men without repercussion, and he's suing for more than $10 million in damages. Twin's attorney, Kirk Edward Shrink, says it is a shocking experience for any man to go through being attacked by a female aggressor in a domestic violence context and knowing they cannot fight back or even defend themselves for fear of being mislabeled falsely the de facto aggressor every day in america men suffer what are often brutal injuries but many lack the courage to come forward and protect their legal rights he adds, our client is willing to stand up and seek protection under California's Domestic Violence Protection Act, which applies to all genders. He hopes other non-female victims of domestic violence crime will feel free to do the same. Wow. It seems like Black China is very toxic. Last year, I believe, she was baptized and she wanted to give her life to Christ. And I thought it was amazing. But then you see she's still in that world. She's still in that world. Yeah, she's more covered up now, but she's still in this whole, she didn't even leave that industry, you know? So, and then her mother, oh yeah, she's very toxic. That mother of hers, Tokyo Tony, my goodness. Wow. She was saying how Angela, you know, Black China, she said that, she said she did not change. She said that B, yeah, she called her daughter the, the, the B word. She said that B did not change. She's still the same old Black China, the same old Angela. So, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, but no. I don't I don't agree with domestic violence whether it's on men or women. We should not put hands on each other. We should respect each other. If you with someone, you're supposed to respect them and they're supposed to respect you. It's a mutual 
thing. I mean, this is common sense. But yeah, so she, he's suing her. So if she did what he said she did, then yeah, let the court handle it. And yeah, I mean, you shouldn't be beating up people. What's wrong with you? Get some help. My gosh. Look what she did. My goodness. This is, this is wrong. And he didn't even put his hands on her. She should be so thankful. Because some of these men would have, you know. So for him to not even touch her, it takes a lot. It takes a real man to not even, oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's sad. That is really sad. Yeah, and there are men who are being abused. There are men who are getting their ASS kicked by women, by their girlfriends, their wives. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. Just like when a man beat a woman, I find it's crazy. It's evil. Both ways. It's evil to me. And that's not right. We should not put hands on each other. This is a person you're supposed to be with. You're supposed to love. And yet you beating them like you hate them. Come on. Get yourself together. Get some help. This is not acceptable. Um, you guys. Um, yeah, so what are your thoughts on this entire situation? Um, Naomi Campbell. Black China. Do you think she should pay $10 million for that? Do you believe him? What are your thoughts? Leave it in the comments. And uh, please like, please subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.